Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about two separate subjects in C++. The first subject we're going to talk about are going to be two-dimensional arrays. And a two-dimensional array is a situation where we have an array where every single element inside the array is another array. So this is a pretty cool situation. And I want to talk to you guys about one other thing, which are nested for loops. And a nested for loop is a situation where we have a for loop inside of another for loop. So this is going to be kind of cool. And you'll see we can actually use these two subjects together, two dimensional arrays and nested for loops in order to build a kind of a cool program. So I'm going to show you guys the basics of doing that stuff. First thing I want to show you is a two dimensional array. So I'm going to go ahead and create an array of numbers and I'm just going to call it number grid. And normally when we create a regular array, we're just going to make an open and closed square bracket. But since we're making a two dimensional array, I want to make another open and closed square bracket after this. Now remember, a two dimensional array is a situation where we have an array where every element inside of the array is another array. And I'm going to show you guys how we can go ahead and set something like this up. So I'm going to give this an initial value. So I'm just going to initialize this. And I'm basically just going to put a bunch of array elements inside of here. So the first thing we're going to do is create the first element in the array. Now, normally, if I was creating an array, I could just kind of type out elements like this, right? You know, I can kind of type them out, delineate them with a comma, and then we have our array. But with a two dimensional array, remember, each individual element is actually another array. So if I want to create one element inside this two dimensional array, I can basically go like this, right? So I can make another sort of mini array inside of here. And I'm actually just going to format this a little bit. And so now the first element in this number grid array is going to be an array with elements one and two. So number grid first element is this array and this array has two elements of its own. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to make another element. So I'm going to put a comma here because remember we need a comma to delineate the different elements. And then down here, I'm just going to paste. So now we're going to do three and four. So we have, one, two, three, four, and why don't we do one more and we'll just do five, six. All right, so essentially what's happening here is we have our overall array, right? So these two curly brackets represent the number grid array. And inside of the number grid array, we have three elements. So this is the first element, this is the second element, and this is the third element, all of which are arrays. And each one of these arrays has one, two elements inside of them. So whenever we're creating two dimensional arrays, we always want to specify um, the numbers over here. So inside of this first open and closed square bracket, we want to tell uh, C++ how many total elements are in the number grid array. So in our case, we have three, because again, there's one, two, three elements. Then over here, we want to specify how many elements are inside of each array element. So you'll notice we have one, two, one, two, one, two, et cetera. So there's going to be two elements in each one of these arrays. And it's very important, especially when you're dealing with two dimensional arrays that you specify these numbers because otherwise you can get really confused, you know? And so by specifying three, two, I know the basic layout. Like I know that this array has three rows, like you can call these rows and then it has two columns. So these would be like columns. Essentially we're building a matrix. All right, so that is a two dimensional array. And let's talk about how we can actually access some of these elements. So if I wanna access uh, some of these elements, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and print some of these out. So over here I can just say number grid. And what I can do is I can make two open and closed square brackets. So I can go just like, just like this. And inside of these open and closed square brackets, these first ones, I wanna specify the row. In other words, I want to specify the element inside of number grid that I want to access. So this would be the element at position zero. This would be the element at position one, and this would be the element at position two. So let's say we wanted to access this element right here. I can put a zero here because it's inside of element zero. And then over here, I want to put the index of that element inside of the actual array. So it's going to be at index position zero, one. So zero again is corresponding to this overall element and one is corresponding to this element inside of that array. All right. So now when we print this out, we should get a two and you'll see over here, we get that two. Let's try one more. Why don't we try to get this five over here? 
So five is gonna be an element zero, one, two. So we're gonna put a two over here and it's gonna be element zero. So we're just gonna put a zero. And now we should get that five, which we do. All right, so that kind of shows you a little bit about how we can create a two dimensional array. And actually this same concept can apply to uh, like n dimensional arrays. So you could have a three or four or five dimensional array and all of these same concepts are gonna apply. Obviously the more dimensions you add, the more complex it becomes, but you can get pretty complex with arrays uh, just by using this technique. All right, so that was the first thing I wanted to show you guys. And now I wanna introduce another topic, which is a nested for loop. A nested for loop is a situation where we have a for loop inside of a, another for loop. And actually nested for loops can be extremely useful because we can use them to print out all of the elements inside of this two dimensional array. So basically we could iterate through all the elements inside of here using a nested for loop. And I'm gonna show you guys how that's gonna work. So down here, I wanna create a basic for loop. So I'm just gonna say four, and I'm just gonna say int i is equal to zero. Again, our goal here is to be able to loop through all of the elements in this array. And you know, as I sort of create this for loop, just kind of stick with me. Eventually this is all gonna make sense. Um, but what I wanna do is I wanna keep looping while i is less than three. And I'm using three here because I want this for loop to loop through all of these individual elements. So all of the arrays inside of the number grid array. Then over here, I'm just gonna say i plus plus. So this for loop is responsible for iterating over all of these elements. So this first element, this second element, and this third element. But remember, each of these elements is another array. So what I wanna do is for each of these arrays, I wanna iterate over each of the elements inside of those arrays. So I can create another for loop to do that. So I can say int, and I'm just gonna call this j. And a lot of times when we're using nested for loops, people will name these i, j, that's kind of a convention. I'm gonna set this equal to zero, and I'm gonna keep looping as long as j is less than two. And remember, two, is how many elements are inside each of these arrays, right? So this loop over here is responsible for iterating through all of these elements. And this one down here is responsible for iterating through all of these elements. So I'm gonna say J less than two, and then I'm just gonna say J plus plus. So now we have our basic structure set up. For every iteration of this I loop, this J loop is going to fully iterate. So it's gonna go through all the way. And down here, I'm just gonna see out and I'm basically just gonna print out all these different elements. So I'm gonna print out number grid i, j. And you guys will see in a second um, basically how this is gonna work. And then real quick down here, I'm just gonna see out um, a new line. So I'm just gonna say see out and l, and that'll print kind of a new line. So let's go ahead and run this, and then I'll give you guys more of an explanation of as far as what it's doing. So when I run this, you'll notice that we're actually printing out all of these elements. So we're printing out one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm actually able to go through and iterate over every single element inside of this uh, two dimensional array. And basically what's happening is every time we go through this top loop up here, this I loop, we're fully iterating through the J loop. So this I loop is responsible for iterating over each individual element. So it's responsible for iterating over this, this, and then this. This J loop is responsible for iterating over each of the elements inside of those elements, which are arrays. So the J loop is gonna loop over this and this. So the first time we go through this loop, I is gonna be equal to zero and J is gonna be equal to zero. So we're gonna print this out. Then we're gonna go through this J loop again. I is still gonna be equal to zero, but J is gonna be equal to one. So we're gonna print this element out. And then I is gonna be equal to one. So it's gonna be one, zero. We'll print this out and then it's gonna be one, one, so we'll print this out. And that's essentially what's happening here. So uh, nested for loops and even like nested while loops, I mean, any sort of nested loop can be very useful and it can be useful for looping through, like I said, complex structures like that. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.